All right, uh, this is Trig Lecture 823 and 824. The student, student will use the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, we all remember that one, uh, and the definitions of trig functions, which we learned back in geometry, to find the value of an indicated trig function. That's what we're going to do. Uh, introduce a couple of variables that you'll see. Instead of x's and y's, which we can use in trig if we want to, uh, we're going to often see, looks like kind of like an Easter egg, a little plastic Easter egg. It's called a theta. You'll hear me say theta. And the one that looks like a little fish is alpha. Just introducing these, uh, their Greek letters, introducing those because you'll see them used a lot in higher math. So they're just variables, just like an X or a Y, so don't let them scare you. Let's take a look at what we're dealing with here. We're going to be uh, finding, we're going to be using the definitions of trig functions to find the value of an indicated trig function. And so what we're going to be doing is finding the value of an indicated trig function, sine of theta, here's theta. So if I want the sine of theta, that would be opposite over hypotenuse, so forth and so on. As a reminder, I'll put these up here for you guys. You learn them in, in uh, geometry. Uh, sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. The tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent. I'm sure you've got all of those memorized. Uh, I think they, a lot of people say SOHCAHTOA, S-O-H, SOHCAH, TOA, T-O-A. Some people remember it like that. Uh, SOHCAHTOA, and then the next three, you can, if you have these three memorized, just remember that the sine and the cosecant are reciprocals of each other. That means if you flip over the sine ratio, you'll get the cosecant ratio. If you flip over cosine, you get secant and vice versa. If you have secant and you flip it over, you get cosine. And similarly, the tangent and the cotangent are reciprocals. If you flip this over, opposite over adjacent, you get adjacent over opposite. So if you know the first three, you automatically know the second three. If you remember that sine and cosecant are reciprocals, cosine and secant are reciprocals, and tangent and cotangent are reciprocals. With that in mind, we're going to try to find, within the context of this triangle, sine, cosine, and tangent of theta or alpha. And today, uh, in today's worksheet, we're only going to mess around with sine, cosine, and tangent. With the next worksheet that we do, uh, the next lecture will deal with cotangent, secant, and cosecant. So here we go. Just a little review. The sine of theta, I come to the theta angle. The sine is opposite over hypotenuse, 9 over 15. And because these are both divisible by 3, I'm going to do that. That would be 3 over, dividing that by 3 would be 5. Uh, cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. That would be 12 over 15. Dividing top and bottom by, reducing the fraction by dividing top and bottom by 3. This will give me 4 over 5. And the tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent, which is 9 over 12. And I can reduce this fraction also by dividing top and bottom by 3. This will give me 3 over 4, if I haven't made any mistakes. I don't think I have. Uh, let's take a look at the sine, cosine, and tangent from the perspective of alpha. Alpha, the sine of alpha is opposite over hypotenuse. That would be 12 over 15. Again, reducing our fractions by dividing top and bottom by 3, because we can, would give me 4 over 5. The cosine of alpha is adjacent over hypotenuse. Simplifying the fraction, dividing top and bottom by 3 would give me 3 over 5. Again, I'm hoping I haven't made any mistakes along the way. And the tangent of theta is equal to opposite, I'm sorry, tangent of alpha is equal to opposite over adjacent, which would be 12 over 9. Reducing the fraction would yield 4 over 3, if I haven't made any mistakes. And... I don't think I have. I think those are all correct. Well, there we go. That's what we're going to be doing. But if we look in our objective, it says we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem if necessary, which means we may not know all three of the values. 
of, of the lengths of the sides of our triangle that's indicated, and we might have to find one of the missing sides. We might have to we'll check to see if we do. We'll use the Pythagorean theorem. Then we'll use our definitions of trig functions. So let's take a look at the first one. Find the value of the indicated trig function. I look up here, I want to find the sine of theta. The sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. I don't know what this is, so I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem. I'll just call it A. And over here I'll use scratch work. A squared plus 15 squared is equal to 18 squared. That will give me A squared plus 225 is equal to 18 squared. I don't want to mess that up. I'll do it in my head. Not, I won't do it in my head. Turn on 18 squared. 324, that's what I thought it was. I'm an old man and it's early in the morning. Now I'm going to subtract 225 from both sides. I'll get A squared is equal to 324 minus 225 equals 99. I'll take the square root of both sides to get A. A will equal uh, the square root of 99. Come out from under the radical and hit enter. It says 3 radical 11. This is the TI30XS and it simplifies from under the radical for you. I, I like that. We could do it old school, but here's what it gives us. Whoops, that's over here. 3 radical 11 is A. And this is just, this is just our scratch work. And now we're going to take the sine. So we'll say the sine of theta is equal to opposite 3 radical 11 over 18. And these will reduce. They're both divided by 3, so that would be sine theta is equal to dividing both top and bottom by 3 will yield radical 11 over 6, if I haven't made a mistake. Yeah, let's see what the answer key says. Radical 11 over 6. Yay! This should seem somewhat familiar from a little combination of Algebra 2 and Geometry. We learned the trig functions in Geometry. We learned how to mess with radicals and whatnot in Algebra 2. Our calculator will do a lot of our radical simplification for us. Let's take a look at this next one over here. I'll get rid of this scratch work. That scratch work from this problem. Let's see what we're asked to do. We are asked to find the cosine of theta. There we go. The cosine of theta is defined as adjacent over hypotenuse. I'm going to call this A. I could call it B. It doesn't matter. I can call it any variable I want. I'm going to say that the cosine of theta is equal to A over 15. And I'll use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out what A is. So I'll do my scratch work right here. Uh, A squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. And that would give me a squared plus 81 is equal to 225. So a squared is equal to 225 minus 81. That's 144. Hey. And we take the square root of both sides, and we get a is equal to plus or minus 12. But since we're talking about the length of a side, there's no such thing as negative length, so we'll just stick with the positive root. a is 12, if I haven't made any mistakes. So this is 12 now. We use the Pythagorean theorem to determine that the length of this side is 12. And now I'm going to evaluate the cosine of theta. The cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, which is 12 over 15. I can reduce that fraction by dividing the top and bottom by 3. That will give me 4 over 5. And that's the cosine of theta in this particular triangle. Okay. So let's see if I got that right. 
Four over five, yay, two in a row. I'm gonna make mistakes throughout the course of the year. You'll see them, I'll apologize in advance. So far I haven't, yay. And this was all scratch work. So we did the first two, let's take a look at the next one. Uh, we're looking for the sine of theta. The sine is defined as opposite over hypotenuse, so I will need to find the length of this side. And I'm going to say that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. When you're doing this with your calculator, make sure you include these parentheses right here. 4 radical 5, if you just go 4 radical 5 and hit squared, your calculator will mindlessly follow the order of operations and it will only square this one and that will turn into a 5 and then it will multiply by 4. We don't want that. We want the whole thing squared. So make sure you put it in parentheses using your calculator. With that in mind, a squared plus 64 is equal to 16 times 5 is 80. I'm going to do that with my calculator just to make sure. Uh, I did that in my head. I make lots of mistakes in my head. So I'm going to say parentheses. 4 times the square root of 5. My little blinking indicator is under the radical, so I'm going to move it out from under the radical, close the parentheses, square it. So where's my square button? There it is. And hit enter. That gives, gives me 80. Yay. So that is 80. And now I'm going to solve this thing by subtracting 64 from both sides. 80 minus 64. That should be 16, I believe. Yeah, 16. And when you take the square root of both sides easily enough, A will equal the square root of 16 is plus or minus 4 within the context of an equation, but we're looking for the length of a side, so we're going to ignore the negative root. And this will just be 4. And once I know that, I can say that the sine of theta, which is what I'm looking for, is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. And we can divide the top and bottom of that by 4. To reduce the fraction, we can divide that by 4 and it will turn into a 1. And we can divide that by 4 and it will turn into 1 times radical 5, which is radical 5. And if you do this with your calculator, or you could just do this with your calculator. If you go 1 over radical 5, that should give you radical 5 over 5. That's called rationalizing the denominator. If I haven't made, I did it in my head, I should have done it with my calculator. I'll go ahead and do it with my calculator just to make sure. Because I make lots of mistakes. I'll say uh, 4 over 4 radical 5. Enter. Radical 5 over 5. Yay, I got it right. So to make it a little neater, the sine of theta is equal to radical 5 over 5 if I haven't made any mistakes. And I'll check and see right now. Hoping for the best. Radical 5 over 5. Yay! Alright. So this is scratch work. I'm going to get rid of it and do the last problem. Or attempt the last problem. We'll put it that way. So here we go. I want to find the tangent of alpha I'm sorry, tangent of theta. And the tangent is defined as opposite over adjacent. Well, hey, I don't need to use the Pythagorean theorem here because I know the opposite and the adjacent. So I'm going to say, well, the tangent of theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. And I'm done, except for the fact that I see that this will reduce. I can divide the top and bottom by 7 because they're both divisible by 7. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, simplify my answer, one-third. That was an easy one. We didn't have to find a missing side, so we forewent the use of the Pythagorean theorem, and hopefully that's correct. If this is 7 and that's 21, then the tangent of theta from this perspective 
It'd be 7 over 21, which reduces to 1 third. Let's see if that's what the key got. One third, yay! So this should all look very familiar. We are using trigonometric ratios, the definitions of trig ratios, and the Pythagorean theorem to find the lengths of missing sides of right triangles. You can do this.